Hi guys, so for this training tip on Wednesday, we, um, I have something else to talk about if you, uh, indulge me. <laughs> um, so with the state of Massachusetts opening up, we're going to have, um, a lot of trainers who are eager and excited to go back to work and be with you. And we're going to have a lot of students who really want to be back in person. We had lots of students who were happy doing the, um, or tolerant, maybe tolerant doing the online learning. Um, and we had a lot that were, no, 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 I'll wait until in person. And I totally understand that. That makes a ton of sense. Um, a, a lot of why we trainers encourage in-person training is because we love having our students there and we love helping you in person. And there's so much that we can see in that moment and, and that we're not getting when we're seeing something in those like tiny little windows in a Zoom meeting. Um, but it is important to impress that when we go back, and, and I just had a meeting with a couple of different dog training outfits that I work with, and a few hiccups came up that I think we dog trainers, so I'm, I'm actually not necessarily talking to students today, I'm more talking to the dog training community, like the things that we have to keep in mind when we go back to work. Um, I know in my state of Massachusetts that our daycares and our summer camps and schools are closed. And in my city, they're going to be closed until probably January or later. Um, other communities might not be um, as restrictive. And we're still waiting for a potential second wave of illness and infection. So what we have to keep in mind um, is that parents who are relying so heavily on those other things to keep their kids entertained for the summer so they might be able to take their dog to a training class or be able to like send the kid to a camp and then get the dog trained. Um, those parents still have their kids at home and those kids would probably have to come with them to a training class. So if you're limited to 10 people, um, you can either take nine students holding with one handler and everybody else is either in the car or at home or you have four people who each can bring a partner with their dog um, and they have their pens and they're six to ten feet apart um, but even just the the sheer number of people that you can have and and the limitations that people are going to have because their home life is going to be very different right now um, the options and the opportunities that we have before might not be there um, so it's going to be very important to keep in mind. And one thing that I've been doing with this YouTube channel is trying to make things accessible to not just um, not just um, my students, but to um, people who might not feel comfortable coming to a class for any reason, whether it's um, societal hurdles or physical hurdles or emotional hurdles or people who just feel uncomfortable in large groups for whatever reason. Um, I, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, making training accessible to as many people as possible. Um, but now I have the opportunity to do that because I'm home. Um, I don't plan on being home forever. Um, I would like to keep this going. And I think in all of the excitement of people going back, we can't forget those people who can't come back right now. Um, for me, my daughter is going to be home all summer. I don't really have anywhere to send her. Um, yes, my husband's working from home, but he's legitimately working. So I can't just like, hey, honey, take the kid. I'm going to go and teach dogs and then potentially put myself at risk and bring the illness back because I'm still high risk. That high risk doesn't go away because COVID it is taking a break right now. So the trainers going back, we have, um, yes, we have our financial needs that we need to meet. And this is really killing a lot of our businesses and our, our trainers are struggling. Um, and our assistants who depend on working with us to get CEUs, or it's not CEUs, but to get experience that way they can get certifications. They're really struggling as well. Um, and we are trainers because we love people. But when we go back, we're going to be 10 feet away or six feet away. When we were talking yesterday in one of my dog training companies, it was, we were trying to figure out the logistics of what that would look like. That yes, we would maybe have all students come in with a front and back clip, uh, 
harness, like maybe a freedom harness that has a front clip and a back clip so that way the owners could use the front and if we needed to access the dog, we could clip to the back, the PPE that we would use, whatever. But we can't, when we are trainers, if you've ever taken a class and you've been this student or you've seen this student in your classroom, um, when the dogs are jumping, our student or assistant, um, our assistant trainer or um, or the lead instructor will come over and physically take the dog and show you what to do. We can't do that now. We won't be able to take your dog and help you in the way that we're used to helping. So it's going to still be an adjustment. So while we're racing to try to get back to normal, when we were saying before normal isn't going to look normal anymore, this is what we mean. This is exactly what we we were what we knew was going to happen, but we didn't know what it was going to look like. Training for Canine Good Citizen. Um, I'm the train. I'm one of the training directors of the oldest AKC obedience club in the country. And one of those things that we we do um, every six weeks is a Canine Good Citizen test. We're going to have to make adjustments to that and follow the guidelines as to what the AKC says that we can do. We're not going to be able to come up and shake your hand. We're not going to be able to. Um, handle your dog in the way that we're used to handling them for that test. And I think maybe in some ways that's a good thing. Um, Maybe respecting people's boundaries and their dog's personal space is a good thing. But when somebody's in trouble, if their dog is frantically biting at their arm or they're frustrated and they're biting at their leash, we're not going to be able to intervene. We have to talk you through it, which is what we're doing on Zoom right now. And the Zoom classes are harder, but at least if you're looking at my little sign here that I keep behind me when I'm doing these little chats, um, distractions, that is why you guys come to class. That's why our students come to class is because they really want the distractions. They want to be able to work with their dogs, with people and other dogs and to really work hard through distractions. And they're going to have those distractions and they're not going to have the physical support from us that we would normally be able to give. So at least on the Zoom classes, we're able to minimize the distractions while we talk them through these things. While most of our senses are limited visually to a little like couple inch square, we're not getting a lot of information, but we're able to keep those distractions really, really, really low and we can talk them through it. So when the distractions are higher, we trainers are going to be trying to learn a new way to teach without being able to use kinesthetic, um, being able to handle leashes or, or help a student or get really close and talk to them, especially if it's something like really important or really, um, really emotionally challenging for a student, we might have a conversation. Um, hey, I know you're feeling really frustrated right now. I see you, this happened to me. Like, I know this is hard. We're not gonna be able to come in close and have that conversation. It might feel rough to, to for us as trainers to say, okay, the, you are, you're struggling. Why don't you take your dog out and go home and try again without being able to have that intimacy and that connection with our students to be able to communicate? I understand. Um, and, and it might feel really isolating for our students if they're communicated to in that way. So like the way that we're used to communicating tough information we're not going to be able to have that emotional cushion that we're used to having. And we might come off as maybe brash or, or not as understanding. So we trainers have to be um, cognizant of how we can communicate to our students. We're not going to be able to size a harness or a head collar or even check their collars to see like, is it too tight for a puppy? Are they growing really big? Like there are, there are days where we talk about like, um, maybe a collar touch for recall or just to get the dog or the puppy used to having their collar touch. And then we touch it and we're like, Ooh, that's really tight. When we say two fingers, we don't mean flat. We mean out like this. Cause now you just have one finger twice. Um, that's really tight on a puppy's neck. So why don't we come out this way? Um, and we can have that conversation because we've connected with that dog and with that student. Um, and we can communicate that in a, mer- in, in a variety of ways, depending on the student. Um, but when we're closer to them, we can have those conversations, I think, a little more easily. We can maybe either, if it's more of a, uh, if it's a student that we think might do better with kind of like, a, oh, ha ha, this is fine. Like, this happens to everybody. Like, you're fine. It happened to me. Like, or if it's somebody who's going to take this very personally, that we would be like, no, look, I understand that you had a hard time. Uh, you, you didn't hurt your dog. It's okay. We're going to fix it right now. Like, 
we get a lot of information when we're close to our students and we're not going to have that option. Um, so we're not going to be able to check equipment in the same way. So we might have to start recommending that they're wearing these harnesses um, prior to coming to class and actually say, this is the harness I want you to have because this gives you the most flexibility. So if you're having a difficult time, we, I can instruct you how to use this harness in an appropriate way, whether it's on the front or the back, if you're doing long line recalls or, you know, if they're working on trying to get the dog to walk on a collar, um, that we can start working here at the chest and then move it up and talk them through that process, but we're not going to be able to do it for them. Um, so I think it's going to, in many ways, make us more effective teachers, but I think it's going to be really hard because a lot of the things that we do is so tactile. Um, so to my trainers, my friends who are in this community, I think we're in for a bumpy road. I think we can't forget our students who are going to feel left behind or uncomfortable coming to classes. I think we have to keep up online options. I think we have to be kind to ourselves as we relearn how to adjust to what rules and regulations and options are available for us. Um, and we have to still be understanding to our students. So I think we still have to give a lot more. I think we still have to give online um, opportunities still have to exist. And I would like to see those continue going forward forever for people who just don't feel comfortable coming to class. Um, or can't because they work three jobs and they're tired um, or might have anxiety issues and large groups make them uncomfortable. Um, or people of color who are in a broadly white community who are coming into our classes, they might not feel as comfortable or welcome. So I think we have to be cognizant of our students and continue to offer classes like this online so that way we can make training accessible, but we should also be there for our students who want to be in person. Um, and I think it's going to take a lot out of us as we start to juggle this going forward. Um, and there's a lot for us to think about. Um, I wish you all the very best of luck. And to the students who watch this to see a trainer's perspective, I um, thank you. <laughs> um, you guys are doing a great job. And it, and I know this has been hard on you guys as students too, because you really want to get out there. You, you If you have a puppy, you want to get out and socialize it. And remember, socialization is keeping them under a level of stress, a threshold of stress of which they don't feel safe. So you want to keep them below that. Um, you want to make sure that they're constantly feeling safe. So I think in an urban environment, maybe the social distancing of socialization has actually worked really well or had the potential to work really well. Um, maybe in more rural areas, it might have been harder, um, but time will tell. Um, we'll see, and hopefully we'll get to see you guys in person very soon. Thank you for listening. Good luck.